These new electric motors are the by far the highest power density motors in the history of mankind. There is nothing even close. And if you actually think about it, there is no supercar or hypercar, no matter how many uh, liters it is, how many turbos they stick on it, that will have any chance against a car with motors like these. Electric cars now are officially the only way you can actually make a car truly, truly go fast. Anyhow, these new motors are made by, well, technically this is a company, I believe part owned by Mercedes-Benz now, but it is an American company and they've won an award for the highest power density motors in history. Here are the details. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, great to have you with us. I did a video a few months ago showing these in-hub motors with about 500 horsepower in the little motors. You could easily put one of them in each wheel. And actually, in fact, the high horsepower version of that motor had 600 horsepower. So you're looking at a car with 2,400 horsepower with fairly small motors, yeah? Pretty amazing technology. However, Yasa, Y-A-S-A, was founded by Dr. Tim Woolmer in 2009 when he was still studying at Oxford. And obviously back then, there wasn't really much going on in the electric car market. Things have changed enormously since then. And Yasa has developed a, a staggering, staggering electric motor, which really puts internal combustion to shame. Yasa motors have been used already in vehicles like the Koenigsegg Regera and the Ferrari Stradale SF90 Hybrid. The Ferrari Stradale SF90 Hybrid, that's really good in drag races. It's one of the only one of the only internal combustion supercars. I mean, it's a hybrid, but one of the only non-EV supercars that can actually keep up with something like a Tesla Model S Plaid. Uh, you know, really legitimate, proper car because of this electric motor. However, Mercedes-Benz performance arm, AMG, they actually acquired Yasa in 2021, which was a very, very smart move because these guys unquestionably make the best electric motors in the world. Now, here's the thing. In 2023, Mercedes-Benz brought out their Vision 111 concept, which was the, the, the electric car that can do, do the most driving on one charge, has the most range in history of any car. So Mercedes-Benz spent a ridiculous amount of money on that car. It was the most efficient car ever in the real world. They tested it. It was amazing. And the main, one of the key reasons for that was it used these electric motors. In 2024, Mercedes integrated Yasa's actual flux motors into their AMG EA architecture, featuring 800 volt capabilities, uh, support for dual and tri-motor systems. But here's the thing. Yasa's actual flux electric motors have four times more torque and double the power of pretty much every other electric motor on the market. Four times the torque and double the power, which is kind of scary. They've actually got a, a technically unofficial world record for the highest power density electric motor. I mean, it's unofficial, but it's, it's real, right? The biggest advantage in my opinion of these motors is the reduction in weight. The motors are so incredibly light, one motor weighs 13 kilograms, which is 28.9 pounds, 13 kilograms. And that single motor has 550 kilowatt. That's 750 horsepower. There's no reason you can't actually use four of these motors in a car. Meaning for the weight of 52 kilograms or 52.4 kilograms, I mean, literally not much over hundred pounds, you would have a car with 2,200 kilowatt, 2,200 kilowatt, which is wild for the weight of 52 kilograms. So there is nothing really in this stratosphere right now. And obviously there's never been an engine in history that's ever been uh, anywhere close to this kind of power density, not even remotely close. Really, if you're looking at say a 550 kilowatt engine currently, you'd need a V8 twin turbo to kind of push that kind of power highly strung, probably four liter, five liter V8 twin turbo. And that's going to be weighing probably around about 350 kilograms, right? So this weighs 13 kilograms, 13 versus 550. The thing is as well, if you're going to use a motor like that in an internal combustion car, you have no, you can't add an extra motor. Where are you going to put it? It doesn't make sense, right? But with this, you can easily add, you can have two motors for 1,000, 
100 kilowatt, you can have four for 2,200 kilowatt. There's nothing stopping you because the weight is such a minimal. Uh, I mean, really, if you actually added, right, let's say you put in uh, 52 kilograms of weight in the back seat of your car, you would not notice the difference, right, with the weight of driving. If you actually drive around a racetrack, you drive around some corners, you wouldn't notice the difference. That's the weight of four motors producing 2,200 kilowatt. And this is not going to end here. In, in 10 years' time, one motor will probably be producing, you know, 750 horsepower for each motor. So one motor will probably be producing 1,000 horsepower. So you really would need one motor weighing 13 kilograms for 1,000 horsepower in, say, 5, 10 years' time. But if you wanted four of them, 4,000 horsepower, there is no way in hell that an internal combustion car... The power density ratio, therefore, is 42 kilowatt per kilogram or 19 kilowatt per pound. 19 kilowatt per pound. Big difference, the big thing for me, the big advantage here is this. You'll be able to put, right, one, one of these motors, you don't need any more than 550 kilowatt in the car, right? You really don't. So one motor means 13 kilograms. That's a big weight reduction for an EV. If you're going to use higher energy density batteries, which a lot of car companies are doing now, they're able to reduce the weight of their cars. That's been happening with newer generation cars over the last six months. Look at Mercedes-Benz, new EV, the CLA wagon. The weight's been reduced by about 250 kilograms, five, more than 500 pounds, due to, mostly due to higher energy density batteries. So then when you combine that with these very lightweight motors, you can really reduce the weight. And as I've been saying for a long time now, this will mean that electric cars will be significantly lighter than internal combustion over the coming years. Yasser shared that the achieved energy density is nearly double the current industry benchmark and it doesn't use any exotic materials. There's no carbon fiber, there's no titanium, there's no expensive stuff in there. And Yasser shared that this actual flux motor design has mass production potential and can be scaled to 10,000 to 50,000 units per year at a viable cost. That's the key up to 50,000 units per year at a viable cost. Now, that's a big problem in my opinion. 50,000 units a year is nowhere near enough. I mean, the entire automotive industry is about 85 million cars, 85 to 90 million cars. So we need more than 50,000. I'm sure they could scale up well beyond that if they you know, wanted to. But Mercedes-Benz owns this company. So Mercedes-Benz has a huge advantage over other companies with these new motors. This is a real uh, decision here that came about ultimately because Mercedes-Benz invested more money than anyone else into EVs for a period of 12 months. They actually did, which is wild. I don't think anyone heard about this. Uh, maybe you could say that other car companies invested huge amounts as well. They did, but Mercedes-Benz for about the space of 12 months invested, I believe it was about $30 billion into EVs, which is absolutely wild. The initial real-world testing of the electric motor prototype was completed on a standard rig, but Yasser has shared information saying this record represents a major milestone, not just for Yasser, but for what's possible at the cutting edge of practical, high-performance electric motor design. This is the first in a series of Yasser technical breakthroughs planned for release over the coming months with additional announcements expected this autumn. So Yasser obviously working on other motors as well, potentially other motors for smaller cars. I mean, realistically, if you stuck this motor in a family car, if you put 550 kilowatt, 750 horsepower in a single motor in a family car, be a bit wild. You know, you your son, your daughter goes and drives it and just crashes it straight away. It'd be pretty crazy. So you don't need this kind of power in every car, but you could just restrict the power. You could use these motors in, in basically every car and just put a power restrictor on them. That would be one way of handling that situation. This is exciting. Mercedes-Benz have made a, clearly what I think is fair to say a game-changing move by acquiring this company a few years ago, well, four years ago now. And now Mercedes-Benz, if they want to, has the ability to sell electric motors to other car companies. If you, if really, if you think about it, you'd have to want these. Imagine if, uh, let's say, imagine if Ford came out and said, guys, we've made a V8. It has twice as much power versus any other V8 in history, and it's half the weight, right? Everyone would be saying, well, um, we wouldn't mind one of those, but this is not a V8. It doesn't have the downsides of a V8, which guzzles tons of fuel, is heavy, is loud. It's the perfect scenario. The power of V8, the efficiency of an electric car, the noise of an electric car, and the weight of a few Big Mac meals. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.